Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. It's Foundry VTT version 12. We're looking at another module today. Um, slowly working through some of these modules that are not necessarily core function, but actually help us do certain things. So in this video, we're looking at, yeah, it's another Ripper one, because again, there's so many to get through. We're looking at puzzle locks. Now, this is a relatively new one. It's been out, oh, it's been out a few months now. Um, but it looks amazing. So puzzle locks is what it is. That's all we've got installed. It needs a lib wrapper with it, which is why that's here as well. What the hell does it actually do? Best way to demonstrate that is actually to flip over to our player view. So let's have a look here. Zoom in. We've got Sorryman here and you can see just to the head of him. He's got a whole bunch of locked doors um, So he needs to try and get through these but they don't necessarily require a particular key So if he attempts to open this door here He's presented with a puzzle now. There's a whole different. I mean, you know, it's the names in the mod, isn't it? <laughs> but there's a whole different types of puzzles that you can set up. So this is a sliding images one where I'm going to click on each of them, and I've got to try and make the picture make sense. Yeah, we're all familiar with these. We've all done these as kids. You know, little plastic <laughs> slidey things that you get with all sorts of, you know, from McDonald's Happy Meals or whatever it might be. Okay, so that's one type of puzzle we can do. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to sit here and solve all these puzzles. Um, next type of puzzle, fill in the gaps. My name is and I rule whatever. So the chances are they're not going to be able to just go and complete this without some kind of clue in the adventure, which is really nice. Uh, so there we go. That's the right number of letters. And that's the right number of letters as well. So it's a little bit like Hangman. Now, because I think I've got the right thing in there as the player, remember this is Sorryman as the player, I can attempt to unlock and it has indeed unlocked. I can now open this door and Sorryman can proceed if he wants to. Okay, so that's how that's how these work. It's basically these doors are just locked and the way that you unlock them is completing the puzzle. Let's try the next one. We've got a spinny wheel. So we have to click on each of these discs to try and make the image make sense. Uh, and obviously a lot of this depends on what image you choose. Let's get his chin lined up. Um, and these images can be anything you like. They could be really difficult because they're star patterns. I've missed it. I've got to go the way around again. You know, they're, they're um, astronomical star patterns and stuff. Uh, everybody's got to line up one more. There we go. Boom. That should unlock it. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Uh, next puzzle. Now, this is a on off color combination. Yeah. So I need to get the right color combination for this to open. And I can't remember what I set it as. So that's going to tell me er, I failed. Okay. Fail to unlock it. All that's going to do is bring me back to the puzzle to try again. Okay. Because um, I can't remember what I set that one as. So that's one option. We've got another option here of matching the word. So uh, click on the left one. A vegetable. That's a carrot. A fruit is an apple. I haven't reset this one, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not mixed up <laughs> um but the idea let me let me reset that one because we we want to uh, we want to see that one that's a, that's a good one to show you how that works so if i just go back to my wall and i come in here i'm going to show you how to set this up in a minute just let me uh let me reset that from the dm's point of view and now when sorryman comes in this is one that I need to reset slightly differently. This is this is nothing to do with the mod being awkward or difficult. This is to do with me being a Muppet. OK, if I open it from here, I can. There we go. That's how I mix it up. Right. Back to Sorryman. Professional work, right? Oh, something I should have noted. You can see when I'm unlocking those, it actually does. When I actually succeed, it does say in the chat that that's been succeeded. Who did it? So. Sorry, man, the wide player one managed to unlock that particular thing. It's just called wall document because it hasn't got a name. All right. Um, so you can see this is mixed up a bit now. All right. And we've got some letters in the middle. So if I match vegetable with carrots, uh, I match fruit with apple. 
can you see there's a line and I haven't I've just left it as default colors but can you see there's a line that goes through those two letters there if I go dwelling house I go uh, Bonadan Alloy who was my first subscriber uh, dairy is cheese you can see these lines are beginning to cross out letters uh, word six match six I, I got bored of putting these all in by the way that's why um, eight to eight nine to nine ten to ten uh, and I should be left with some letters now interestingly I know the oh the solution is supposed to be die but I'm missing an e I wonder why I'm missing an e but you can see that I've got D. I worked when I did it, um, when I was testing it. I've got D, I, and there should be an E showing, but for some reason it isn't. Um, probably because I matched something incorrectly. And again, I haven't made it easy because of the colours that I've used, like a Muppet. Hmm. Let's see, it won't let me unlock it. I've only got D, I. Well, I've got B showing at the moment. Why have I got B showing? Eight to eight, ten to ten, nine to nine, eight to eight, seven to seven, six to six. Oh, it's undoing them again. I haven't actually got an E on there, have I? <laughs> I'll have to look at that one. It worked, but worked before. But there we go. Slight little issue. Um, again, that's more than likely me rather than anything else. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, but you, you get the idea you see how that works what's the next one ah so this is um this one's called mosaic um and we click on these and we're just twiddling each of these so the pictures are in the right place they're just not lined up i mean it's it's really easy this one of course a lot of it depends on the image that you use um just need to rotate all of these so that in this case my bird is correct There we go, and now I can unlock it. Yes, done, brilliant. Let's move on, next one. This is a musical notes one. So this is for bards. So, well, it's not for bards, it's for anybody really, but you know, it's particularly nice for bards to really buy into their characters or any character that uses music. Now they've got to play the right tune. Um, so by clicking on each of these, I can choose the correct letters. <laughs> what actually are those notes I should be playing here so I need to make sure I'm matching those notes and anybody who knows music is probably going to have a bit of an advantage okay so this is this shouldn't be uh let's try a d an e and a D and that's actually going to be correct because while there's I, I, if I sped it up a little bit I'll show you that when I go to the configuration uh, that's the uh, the opening bars to uh, twinkle twinkle little star <laughs> uh, and there we go it unlocks it brilliant let's move on look at the next one see we're running out it's fine this is a Sudoku one. So we've got to have the numbers one, two, three, four in each row, but we can't have it in more than once. So these two up here have to be a one and a two. Uh, so if I put a two in there, I've now got two in that vertical column. If you know Sudoku, you know what's going on. Uh, so that can't be a two there. So that has to be a one, which means this one has to be a two. One, two, three, four. This has to be a three. So I've got a one, two, three, four in there. I've got a one, two, and a four, so that has to be a three. I've got a two, four, and a three, so this has to be a one. Now in this vertical one, I've got a one, two, three, so this one has to be four. And as you can see, that has to be a one in there, and this has to be a two. So that should be complete, and it will unlock. Next. Oh, so this is like a, um, a cryptex. So we have to rotate our cryptex to get the correct the correct word um, now again you <laughs> they can sit here and spend an entire game session trying to trying to crack this um, you know by force but actually really what you want to do is to have them finding a clue that allows them to then so these are the doors we've managed to unlock okay next one uh, 
Right, so for this one, what we have to do is we have to cover this. So this is called uh, Stones and Stars or something, Rocks and Stars, something like that. So we have to cover with our tokens as many of these star icons as we can. Now I just chose these random pictures. I've got a bone and, you know, bones and stars, I think it was called, something like that. Um, I've got to cover as many of those as possible, but each of these columns, the number at the top, one, uh, sorry, three, two, one, three, and down the side, one, two, three, three, denotes how many of my tokens have to be in each one. So if we look at this third column, I'm only allowed one token in that column. I've currently got three. I've got to take two off. Um, I'm only allowed one in the top. I've only got one in the top. I've got to have two in this one. So, okay, I can put two in there. I've got to have three in this one. Uh, okay, well, that's three. And then I've got two there. I've got three there, one there. I've got to have two more in this column. Oh, but I can't because now I've got... Oh, I'll have to take that one out of there. Now I've only got one in there. See what I mean? So uh, rather than me spending ages fiddling with that one, I think you probably get the idea. You, and of course, you can set these up like I have and go and play with them yourself. Um, and the last one we've got here is a switches. So on, off, on, off. Have we got the levers in the right order um, to be able to unlock it? And in that instance, yes, I did, because obviously I set it up. OK, so that's how they work. Lots of different ways to do it. There's a couple of others as well that I didn't include. Um, let's have a little look at how we actually set these up, shall we? So if I go to my, because I've got these on doors, if I go to my walls and double clicked one of these doors, this door is locked. Now, because I've got puzzle lock installed, I get, can you see at the top there, I've got this icon on the bar here that says puzzle lock. If I click puzzle lock, it opens this menu. Now, there's lots of configuration that you can do that I did not do. So first of all, I can choose the lock type. And you can see we looked at sliding tiles, fill in the blanks, the image wheel, mastermind, which was the on off dots, um, the, the word match, the mosaic, uh, the music one, the Sudoku one. We looked at cryptex, pawns and stars is what that was called, not bones and stars or rocks and stars, whatever I called it. There is an item one we didn't look at, uh, number glyph, password, which is literally you just type in the password. Didn't see that was really much worth showing and switches which is where we had on off rather than the different colors the different colors one was mastermind so we select whichever one we want uh, let's let's select sliding tiles and then we can hit configure and here we go we can choose the image that we want to use that i used my greater strix image and i can set how big that grid is so is it a four by four grid, which is what I had? I could have anything up to a 10 by 10 grid. Now, obviously, you know, you need to balance that for challenge versus boredom. <laughs> you don't want to be sitting there for two hours and trying to solve one puzzle um, unless they've got clues towards how to do it. So that's really quite simple. And what's really good is that you've got this wonderful little description. This is how it works. This is what the players need to do. For every single one of these puzzles, you've got these options, which is really, I mean, again, it's Ripper. His documentation, his support wording. You can go to his wiki. There's some more information on there as well. Really, really nice. As a label, you can give it. So, you know, these will, mine will just say wall document and things because I didn't fill any of this in. But I can give it a label and a description. Uh, I can say whether it's already unlocked or not. You can set how many attempts they get. So this is minus one, which means it's unlimited. They can fail as many times as they like. But also I can add some sounds for something it says, you know, a sound it plays when you've unlocked it, a sound it plays when you're interacting with it, and a background image if you wanted to have that. A glow effect, text colors. So I left these all as default. Some locks, some lock types may not use this color, but we can change those colors if we want to. The text color, let's make that, you know, I don't know, green. We can change these if we want. Secondary color, let's make that an orange, just so they stand out. And you can choose specifically the fonts you want if you want to. Notice there's always, there's also a place to put an unlock macro. So they unlock it and something happens. So, that's all we need to do is on a normal door obviously we want it locked we can put the puzzle lock on and we can do that now to actually see the puzzle itself at the top in this menu there is open puzzle 
So by clicking that, you can see it's opened the puzzle in the background. Let me close these so we can see it. And here is our, our puzzle. And I've got some options down here, zoom in, zoom out. Um, however I want to do that to set how it's gonna look. Uh, I can shuffle these pieces. I'm gonna get it to do 100 random moves on this one. It's gonna just randomly move it around. That's how it's going to shuffle it for us. Um, attempt to unlock. Configure lock is just bringing up this menu again, which we've already got. Uh, share it to chat. Da -da, there it is. Now it's again, it just says wall document because I haven't named it. Um, and we can close it as well. So setting them up is actually really, really straightforward. Let's pick on another one. Have a quick look at this puzzle lock. This was the mastermind. Um, this was the one with the colored dots. So all I'm doing is telling what the solution is, was red, green, blue, yellow. That was the solution and you can actually tell it what color pegs are available so you don't uh, mine's got orange and purple this is the default orange and purple pegs that come up as well to mislead so that makes it harder but you could reduce it down to just three different colors or whatever you wanted to do you can do that um, let's pick on another one here and this puzzle lock this happened to be the melody so this is the music one and all we're doing to set that up is typing in the so i put in g d d d e e d because that's twinkle twinkle little star <laughs> but the pause between notes if i'd made that shorter that probably would have sounded slightly more like twinkle twinkle little star um and how long each note plays so you're not going to get it to play a full piece of music because obviously that's not what it's for um, but you can get them to replicate something if you want to they have to play a particular tune correctly in order to get through uh, now i'm thinking you know um that that is really good for to engage characters that have bothered to take musical instruments and stuff not necessarily bards but of course that does include bards but it's just a nice little different way of doing it and even if you've got players who are a bit musical it helps engage them rather than just oh it's another numbers puzzle and everybody hates doing number puzzles <laughs> you can just mix it up so really, really flexible types of puzzles. You can use as many as you like, you know, especially the ones with the images. They're really easy to theme. You know, if I'm doing Curse of Strahd, I don't want to have fluffy fairy pictures everywhere. I want to use dark themes and stuff. I can do that. Um, the Cryptex one is really good because uh, Curse of Strahd is so laden with background and everything else it's easy for them to pick things up and go ah oh, right I'll try that in the cryptex uh, I've got to get the right word in but they're going to it's going to be really hard for them to brute force that or rather really time consuming I can make that word as long as I want I did it with just three letters D-I-E die um, but I could have had the full name of Strahd von Zarevich now at the beginning of the adventure they haven't even heard of Strahd von Zarevich uh, and then they start to hear of Strahd. So it's not until they get further and further into the adventure they actually learn his full name, and that could be the solution to the cryptex that they could pick that up and, you know, before they even get to the death house, and they're carrying it around with them for days and days and days, have no idea how to get into it. Um, there will always be somebody who tries to smash it with a hammer. You'll have to deal with that. Now, what's really important to note is I've locked all of these doors using this. But you can lock other things. If you've got monks active tile triggers, I haven't got that active in this world. If you've got monks active tile triggers, you can lock tiles in exactly the same way. So that means you might have a uh, an image of a switch that they need to click, and they go to click on it, and actually up oh, there's a puzzle lock. They've got to solve the puzzle before that tile then becomes active for them to be able to click on. Or maybe you could potentially do it the other way and say well hang on a minute there is a there's, there's a pit there um, that is an active tile and if they tra tread on it they fall through but actually they need to solve a puzzle to deactivate the tile you can do that which is potentially really really awesome um, also you can lock journal entries so they you might say oh yes you find a book but it's got a you know it's got a magical puzzle or something once they solve that it will allow them it can change the settings let's have a quick look at that I haven't got one set up I don't think um, so here's a here's an image that's it's just an image in the journal okay and obviously I can configure ownership and say in inherent 
uh, let's say so none all players have none access to this okay uh, but I've got that puzzle lock option so I can choose to put a puzzle lock on this journal entry whatever I want to do sliding tiles probably isn't the most sensible but I can do that um, and slap that in uh, and then when they solve this puzzle put the puzzle <laughs> when they solve this puzzle it unlocks this journal entry for them so um, what happens unlock permissions all players become owner or observer all players but you can have it just for the unlocking player okay so only certain people can view it if they've solved the puzzle whatever that might be so it could be password protected effectively um, so if only one character learns the password and decides not to tell the rest of the party they've got access to the secret document um, yeah it ensue a row amongst the party <laughs> if they're not sharing information but hey so you can do that so you can lock all sorts of things which is i think is really really cool um yeah it's great uh i can't remember if i mentioned at the beginning that this is a premium module um so again you know you might you might think that this is worth you know the um paying a few pennies to have access to this one or if you've already got access to it because you're already a patron member then obviously you know you can use it or not um, but yeah just be aware i think it's really cool there's some really great ideas in here uh it's all very simple to do um and it's such a huge variety and that's what i like best about it is pick you can pick a puzzle i want a puzzle here it chances are Ripper's already made a puzzle that will work for that scenario for you or something very similar. It's great, isn't it? Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, and again, some of you might already be using it. Leave a like, leave a comment. And if you're not subscribed, please do so. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.